So as we were investing, we used something called the S curve and that was popularized by Ian e. Rogers in 1962. So it's been around for a while and you use the S curve to figure out how quickly will an innovation be adopted. And so um, if you picture an S in your mind, you've got the base of an S where the growth, it's happening, but it looks and feels very slow. But then you reach a tipping point or the knee of the curve and you move up that steep, sleek back of that S where the growth is happening very quickly. And then you reach saturation where the growth starts to taper off. And so that's how an innovation diffuses. It's how um, a virus like COVID-19 diffuses. The insider aha that I had, so I had that first aha that disruption isn't just about products, it's about people. The second big insight was that this S curve could help us understand people as well. It could help us understand how we learn and it could be used as a mental model to think about how we grow. So every time we start something new, we start a new project, we start a new hobby, we start a new job, we start a new relationship even, we are at the base of that S. And the growth is happening, but it feels very slow. We feel awkward, we feel clumsy, we feel like we just have no idea what we're doing. And there are lots of days where we feel discouraged because we haven't put all the pieces together yet. But that's exactly how it's supposed to feel. That's what it's supposed to look like. But we also then know, the math tells us that if you will put in that effort, um, the pieces are going to start to fit together. And you're going to accelerate into this place of that steep part of the S where at the launch point, took a lot of time for a little to happen. Now in a little time, a lot happens. So now you're in this place where it's hard, but it's not too hard. It's easy, but it's not too easy. All of your neurons are firing and you feel exhilarated. Like this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. And that's the steep part of that curve. And that's where we want to spend as much time as possible um, in our life, in our career. And then you get to the high end of the S curve. So you play out that growth and you start to get to this point where like, you know, I figured this out. I know how to do it. It's become fairly easy for me. And because it's easy, I'm no longer getting the dopamine that comes with learning. And so I've now got to figure out what I'm going to do. I got this dilemma, this innovator's dilemma of if I jump, I'm kind of scared because, you know, I'm going to jump to do something new. Or if I stay here, then there's the risk that I actually get pushed off that curve. Like I lose my job, for example. And so you've got this dilemma of do you jump or not? Um, do you wait to be disrupted? or do you disrupt yourself? And I'm advocating for when you get to the top of the S curve, you have two choices. You can do number one, find a way for it not to be the top of the S curve. So there's a Zen saying, when you get to the top of the mountain, keep climbing. So how do you figure out so that top actually isn't a top, it's just a plateau to continue climbing or you find a new curve to jump to. So you learn, you leap and you repeat. Again, it's this mental model for how we grow. and foundational to all of this is that I believe that we as human beings are wired to learn and we're wired to grow. And so if you have a model in your brain of what that looks like, then you're going to be able to do it more effectively, more efficiently, and ultimately leave a, live a more purpose filled, a happy life, which I think we're all trying to live.